at one well, time? Uh, in in the in the clean sphere at S four, uh, I was privileged to interact with a single one mm-hmm. J Rod. Mm-hmm. His personal name, which is only carried between he and his parents, is Kaela. Uh, his personal name was not known to or transmitted into his uh, his culture because they are uh, essentially um, numerologists. Hmm. Uh, in same any, kind of numbers that we use. Well, yes or and yes and no. It's the same, same kind of numbers that we use, but they use them in in, in different ways. Mm-hmm. And they also uh, compact and diffuse various different number systems to communicate with one another. Okay, so telepathically or in an auditory uh, sense. Yes, they can, they can uh, um, in the in the P plus fifty two Ks. Now we're talking about a, a, a future species here. In the P plus fifty two thousand year species they had basically gone to telepathy alone uh, and and in that case they had a specialized organ if you will developed uh, on their brain which would allow them to entrain to one another basically the the way a dolphin would acoustically use uh, its its melon to speak with uh, other dolphins in the ocean mm-hmm. and so they would uh, uh, thump each other if you will with with entrainment and communicate that way and that in fact is is how they operate in the earlier species the p plus forty five thousands how they operate to actually abduct a human being they entrain to your level of uh... of uh, composure or relaxation your endorphins and encephalins begin kicking in you become relaxed and you willingly submit um, but in any case the 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 one j rod to which I was directly uh, um, privileged to interact at the at the clean sphere uh, was suffering from actually three separate syndromes at the same time. Okay, let's uh, get into that right after this briefly, Dan. As we slide into the break, how did the J Rod come to be there? Crash? Uh, yes, it was a 1953 crash with two P plus 45,000 J Rods outside of Kingman, Arizona. Very good. All right, stand by. We'll be right back and follow this along with Dr. Dan Burrish. All right, you said that the J-Rod was suffering, I guess others as well, from three types of problems. What were they? Yes, sir. Um, One was a primarily uh, immunologically based problem, which was called an IgA or immunoglobulin A. Now, here comes some words, monoclonal gammopathy of uncertain significance. The second one was a genetic cocaine-like syndrome, and uh, this cocaine uh, disease is uh, seen in a few members of our population now. Hmm. And the third problem was the uh, distal uh, polyneuropathy, and uh, that was the problem which was responsible for what was called the denervation of their, their miracrine glands. Was this alien injured in the crash? Uh, not uh, severely, as far as I'm aware. Was uh, disoriented and had a, uh, a great deal of a problem breathing our atmosphere. Um, the the J Rod was traveling with two members from an earlier timeline, from 7,000 years earlier, and he was basically uh, mixed in with this group mm-hmm. in order to gain intelligence over the group. He was a spy, for lack of a better term. Hmm. Well, uh, more and things changed. The more they stay the same. Uh, indeed, indeed. Um, one of the uh, extraterrestrials, as I understand it, was uh, killed uh, upon impact or very shortly thereafter. Mm-hmm. The other J Rod, the P plus 45,000, was taken to Los Alamos facility where he ultimately um, came across a man named Bill Uhouse, or where Bill Uhouse uh, came across him. I've now, this J A little this bit J- of this. I'm sorry? I've heard a little bit about that. Um, this J Rod was was able to speak in our atmosphere and to operate for moderate amounts of time in our in our standard temperature and pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, during the time, I should actually digress a bit here. During the time between the P plus forty five thousand J Rods, the one which are known as the abductors or the hive mentality folks, the ones that basically want to justify their own history for themselves, for their own vanity, who look at us as nothing more than experiments. Uh, between that time and between the time of the P plus 52,000s, 
we're gradually coming back to more of a, uh, a balanced sense of the universe, even though they're still basically uh, utilitarianists in numerologists. Dan, these, uh, these, these years, 52,000s and so forth, are those geared to our current time forward, or is yes. it based on another time yes. paradigm? All right. Yes, that, that would be considered a, a, uh, a linear uh, vector forward, yes. Got it. Um, during that time, they gradually moved from, from uh, audible communications to telepathy only. What happened is, as, as they evolved, they, their, their species continued to evolve, their subspecies of, of human did, um, and there was a change, a further change in the, um, the uh, cerebellar area and the cerebral area of their brain, um, an area called the superior frontal gyrus, bisected, and it kind of rolled back around the back of their brain uh, from their uh, audio sensory to their uh, visual sensory areas, and that allowed them the, the higher capacity through quick, uh, quick evolution, higher capacity to speak um, uh, 99 to 100% telepathically. Hmm. Uh, now, the J-Rod that I met up at S4 had the ability to, to mimic um, physical speech, but it was only mimicry. Was he good at it? Well, he hit his laughter well. He, he would actually laugh. He would bend forward, and I could see his... Uh, <laughs> He I hid his laughter. Well, uh, there, there's a there's an actual uh, story that goes along with the fact that uh, he and I had a communication and a friendship uh, nearly from the first time that I went down on the on the uh, the clean spheres floor below the gallery mm -hmm. to the the final cessation of our of our physical relationship in 2003. Mm -hmm. um, and that that story is that he and I used to privately communicate, and it's very true. Um, from nearly the first time that I entered into the clean sphere, uh, which was at the end of 1993, start of 1994, it depends on whether you take my memory or take the Majestic's records. Um, my memory says end of 93. But um, from the first time that I entered in there, now we have a, a series of uh, um, very uh, – uh, in-depth protocols for how we were supposed to contact the J-Rod and how we were supposed to step forward and take samples from him. One of those protocols was uh, upon entry past the gantry into the actual clean sphere and the clothing, closing of the door and the, the pressurizations uh, for our operation inside the clean sphere, mm -hmm. that I was supposed to step over to the right, and in the clean sphere glass there would be projected a teleprompter image of a human being holding his right hand up. I was supposed to step in front of that teleprompter image, hold my right hand up, and whereupon the J-Rod was supposed to understand that I was a friendly human being and not there to hurt him. Hmm. Meanwhile, he and I were already joking back and forth. Really? Uh, he, he said, I know you're not going to hurt me. And I said, no, I'm here to you know, take a sample. And, and he said, what is your name? And I told him what my name was, and he said, then you're the one I remember, and we, 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 we got on very well. Did your su so, well, superiors, I guess I could call them that, did your superiors know this kind of communication was going on at that oh, time? They, did, you, did you keep it quiet? They knew, they knew, and I kept as much of it quiet as what I could. Was, was uh, he, was this, is this a male or a female? Did they have, male. All right. Was he a prisoner of war or a prisoner otherwise? Uh, yes. Uh, after after he was taken over to the uh, the S four facility after crash, uh, there came to be a schism, if you will, between the the Sigma unit within uh, Majestic, uh, then the uh, still the Majestic twelve, mm -hmm. uh, and the the various intelligences, and that that schism occurred between we and the P plus forty five thousand J rods. Uh, we believing that he was a P plus 45,000 J-Rod, because that's how he was billed mm -hmm. when he was coming here, mm -hmm. um, was then placed under lockdown, and uh, that is actually the origin from whence he, he began calling himself captive. Were, were, these, were these ETs viewed as threatening visitors to the planet by, by other elements of the government, not necessarily MJ-12, but the military? Yes. Were they, were they reviewed as a threat? Oh, yes. All right. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, the military still regards them as right. a threat. Was he, now, was he on a, a, a scout craft or a, a primary? 
Well, no, this this was a this was a diplomatic exchange vehicle. Oh. Um, they were they were here for for information exchange, and the primary mission that they were here for was actually fulfilled uh, between Mr. Uhouse and uh, the J Rod over at Los Alamos, Los Alamos that had to do with the uh, the uh, back engineering or alien reproduction vehicles. Very good. All right, stand by if you would, Dan. We'll pause and come right back. Yes. Dr. Dan Burrish, scientist and a man who worked with an ET at Area 51 at S4. All right, let's go back to the story, Dan. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, I, sh I should indicate that. We're, we're, I think we were well, we left hanging there. Excuse me, I didn't mean to interrupt, but people were saying samples uh, to me, email. What about samples? So we're going to go back to that in just a minute. Okay. Um, and and what I'd like to indicate is the difficulty that we were facing involving the the three associated pathologies involving this J rod. Not only we were were we dealing with just an analogous uh, pathophysiology in the J rod. This was a, a truly to us an, an alien situation. Um, our our normal chromosomal pairs that we have in our body had been reduced by the time uh, of the P plus 52,000 J-Rod Kaela, uh, to 19 pairs. And that, that would be only 18 pairs of autosomal and one pair of sex chromosomes. And uh, they were reduced um, by combinations of, of uh, the combining of genetic material through what are, are what are called Robertsonian translocations. So what, what we would think would be, for instance, um, chromosome number four in the present human being would actually be a combination of chromosome number four and chromosome number eight in the J-Rod. So we basically had to reinvent the wheel in dealing with the J-Rod. Okay. Um, and the samples that were, were taken from the J-Rod. Now, now, you were sent in there to collect physical samples from this, this living being who was being held a prisoner. Right. Um, I, w I was sent in to remove um, distal uh, peripheral nerve samples uh, right. because the J-Rod was undergoing what was called a, a Wallerian form of degeneration of the, of the, uh, the nerves. <laughs> and so what I had is something called a pin system or a pressurized induction needle system which had a small compartment uh, um, vessels if you will on them that I could plug in uh, inject the needle into the the uh, periphery the the arm of the J-rod uh, and fire the it was it looked like a little gun basically fire the uh, the gun by pulling the trigger and that would cause a um, a suction if you will of a small amount of material into a vial a small vessel uh, that vessel that vial could then be removed from the pin system placed into a port at the um, near the gantry area for the clean sphere and it would be sent up one floor into our cell culture area up on level three. Um, the the peculiarity of removing these samples um, was that whatever I was doing on the J rod, I was feeling. And now I'm, I'm uh -huh. <laughs> so I, I, I was generally I'm, I'm generally a right-handed uh, um, person, mm -hmm. uh, although I was ambidextrous when I was a little boy. But I had to learn how to use. Uh, my left hand to remove these samples very gently from the right arm of the J-Rod because it was required that huh. I removed it from his right arm by our protocols, uh -huh. which were set up by our cover committee. Uh -huh. And so I would slowly insert the um, the needle into the uh, musculoskeletal portion of the, the lower uh, uh, arm by the uh, just above the wrist area of the J-Rod. And fire that, and as I fired that, my right arm uh, would enter into intense pain. So I was uh, basically required to do it left-handed because I knew that my right arm would be in pain. Mm. Uh -huh. um, there are no free lunches when dealing with... Was, was this something that the J-Rod wanted you to feel? Uh, no. Uh, what happened is, as our association um, increased, as our relationship increased, uh, he would normally, I would, I would have to be speaking with him during the process. Mm -hmm. And as our familiarity to one another increased, our ability to disconnect
at one well, time? Well, uh, in in the in the clean sphere at S four, uh, I was privileged to interact with a single one mm-hmm. J Rod. Mm-hmm. His personal name, which is only carried between he and his parents, is Kaela. Uh, his personal name was not known to or transmitted into his uh, his culture because they are uh, essentially um, numerologists. Hmm. Uh, same kind of numbers that we use. Well, or yes and yes and no. It's the same, same kind of numbers that we use, but they use them in 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 different ways, mm-hmm. and they also uh, compact and fuse various different number systems to communicate with one another. Okay, so telepathically or in an auditory uh, sense. Yes, they can, they can uh, um, in the in the P plus fifty two Ks. Now we're talking about a, a future species here. In the P plus fifty two thousand year species, they had basically gone to telepathy alone. Uh, and and in that case, they had a specialized organ, if you will, developed uh, on their brain, which would allow them to entrain to one another. Basically, the the way a dolphin would acoustically use, which was called an IgA or immunoglobulin A. Now, here comes some words: monoclonal gammopathy of uncertain significance. The second one was a genetic cocaine-like syndrome, and uh, this cocaine uh, disease is uh, seen in a few members of our population now. Hmm. And the third problem was the uh, distal uh, polyneuropathy, and uh, that was the problem which was responsible for what was called the denervation of their, their miracrine glands. Was this alien injured in the crash? Uh, not uh, severely, as far as I'm aware. Was uh, disoriented at the clean sphere. Uh, was suffering from actually three separate syndromes at the same time. Okay, let's uh, get into that right after this. Briefly, Dan, as we slide into the break, how did the J-Rod come to be there? Crash? Uh, yes, it was a 1953 crash with two P plus 45,000 J-Rods outside of Kingman, Arizona. Very good. All right, stand by. We'll be right back and follow this along with Dr. Dan Burrish. All right, you said that the J-Rod was suffering, I guess others as well, from three types of problems. What were they? Yes, sir. Um, One was a primarily uh, immunologically based problem. Uh, It's it's melon to speak with uh, other dolphins in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And so they would uh, uh, thump each other, if you will, with with entrainment and communicate that way, and that in fact is is how they operate in the earlier species, the P plus forty five thousands. How they operate to actually abduct a human being, they entrain to your level of uh, of uh, composure or relaxation. Your endorphins and encephalins begin kicking in. You become relaxed, and you willingly submit. Um, but in any case, the 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 one J rod which I was directly uh, um, privileged to interact at the 